there are two things that I kind of want to talk about before talking about it, if that makes sense. Um, one of them, <laughs> I um, is that the pre-talks, right? The, um, one of them, I, I kind of mentioned it to Doug before we started. And, and that's just kind of like that. Um, I'm kind of being like peer review right now. Like I have a lot of things where I'm just like, that's just kind of how I am. I'm like, well, this is really interesting. What about this? What about this? And so that's part of what, what I what I'll be doing. Um, and then um, also, I just kind of want to frame a little bit of my interest in this topic and, and what brought me to it, because I think that will help contextualize some of my questions. Um, sure. So for me, I'm 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 someone who's very um, I'm someone who usually likes the hero's journey, it, uh, or broadly speaking, I suppose. Um, actually, let me rephrase that. Let me back up a little bit. <laughs> what 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 I'm um, as a storyteller, I'm I'm really interested in. Um, what a lot of people would kind of categorize as sort of the traditionally masculine aspects. I'm really interested in, you know, in, in war and in combat and basically women with swords. That's my big thing. Um, <laughs> and, and so, uh, and so while I'm very satisfied with um, that kind of an archetype or that kind of a, a story, you know, for the kinds of stories I write, something that I've noticed in the culture at large is that it seems to be uh, a lot of denigration of femininity, especially uh, with women. I think there's a denigration of masculinity in men, but uh, you know, the one with women, of course, pisses me off in particular um, as a woman. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And like a couple examples would be like um, the Eminem stupid controversy where they like made their their fem their very feminine characters more ma like androgynous as if that was some sort of improvement, you know? Yeah, like, it's well, odd. I know what I you mean. Right. Or um, or Galadriel was it was one that pissed me off. Where it's like this is a very feminine character. And then they had to make her a warrior as if that was better. And, and I'm a pretty androgynous woman, like for a woman, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a lot less feminine than most men, women I know. Um, but I don't think I'm better than them. I'm just different. <laughs> and so I, I that that pisses me off. And so I'm in this stage of like, well, I want to defend femininity and I want to defend the, a feminine hero and the kind of stories you would tell about them. But I'm sitting here going, I don't know what that is exactly. It's a little bit harder to define and I want to know what it is I'm defending. Um, sure. And so I, I suspect there's probably multiple answers to that question. But um, so that's kind of where, where I'm coming from is this like, I, I want to, I want to, you know, promote those kinds of stories more, even if I'm not the one that usually writes them. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of. Hey, I, I'm a guy story. and I wrote uh, Theodora. So <laughs> right. You know, mm. I, I, I feel you. I know what you mean. Um, yeah. I also sometimes wonder what we're trying to solve by attacking femininity as as if it's like old fashioned or something as mm -hmm. if it's, mm -hmm. or, or as if it's a uh, cliche that almost treating certain things like it's cliche. I'm like, well, it doesn't mean it's cliche. It doesn't mean it's wrong. So I'm right. I'm with you 100 percent on that. And I do think yeah. it, it's tough to try to it's always tough to try to define something definitively. Uh, especially yeah. something uh, broad and that something that might mean something to different people. Um, but I certainly appreciate the effort there because um, I think it's, it's a worthwhile cause to, to, yeah. especially in stories to, <laughs> to, diff because I wanted to say too, I'm not anti hero's journey, even though yeah, I yeah. wrote the hero in labyrinth, I am extremely pro hero's journey. I have not turned on it. I've not turned against it. Um, it has real life implications uh, even mm -hmm. in my personal life. So um, to me, the fact, at least in my head, the fact that I have the heroine's labyrinth and the hero's journey, both, I don't have to elevate one to bring the other down or, or vice versa. I have two models to pull from. And the more I understand both models, the more I see a little bit of both in a lot of stories, which is interesting. So yeah. I, I, we're probably on a similar page in terms of honoring archetypal mm -hmm. images, stories, and themes uh, masculine and feminine um, archetypes. Uh, yeah, I don't think that those are completely manufactured. Uh, I think some of those come from the human imagination and that's not a disqualifier to me. Yeah, quick question, since you just kind of mentioned something that I was gonna get into later, but I wanna ask this now. Do you think it's sure. possible for a, for a story, like just in, in your, cause you've spent a lot more time thinking about the hero's journey than I have too. I feel like I'm still learning it. All I've done is I've read I've read this book. I've just finished re reading it very recently. So it's very fresh yep. in my mind. Um, but I have not yet read like some, the, some of the stuff that's written after, like what he's reading. Or I don't know if you finished it yet, but the, the writer's journey, which, you know, applies it to writers. Christopher Vogler. So I haven't, yeah, right. right. So I haven't read his take on it yet. Um, that's coming up. But but do you feel that a story could be both? Like, is it possible, do you think, for a story to be both a hero's journey and to have the Her Heron's Labyrinth kind of archetypes? And does that, do you feel that that uh, weakens it at all? Or do you think that's just nope. that they're compatible? 
Interesting. Nope. Uh, I think that th there's several stories that have both. I have examples yeah. that I've worked on even from my book. And then there are examples where I, because the hero's journey has existed for a while, I feel like there are stories where the writers tried to write a hero's journey and somehow ended up writing a heroine's labyrinth. Anyway, in fact, labyrinth is one of those that I think they were trying to write a hero's journey, mm -hmm. but still they ended up in this other model. Um, uh, Alien and Aliens, believe it or not, has both elements of hero's journey and the heroine's labyrinth. Uh, there's two villains, in fact, and one meets the heroine's labyrinth definition of a villain. The other meets the hero's journey definition of a villain. Wreck-It Ralph. Ralph goes on a hero's journey, but Vanellope goes on a heroine's labyrinth journey simultaneously in the story. I think the original trilogy of Star Wars was a hero's journey story, but the prequels was a heroine's labyrinth story with Anakin mm -hmm. cast as the heroine, actually. Um, mm -hmm. So... I don't think it weakens it at all. I think it's up to the storyteller to, to understand what archetypes you're unearthing as you tell your story. And if you identify that, understand the meaning of it, and then load up on that because people will respond to it. That, that's my thought anyway on, on that. Yeah. But you could definitely have both. It, there's not one at the expense of the other. That's really interesting. Do you, do you think, um, what do you think might be behind that? I mean, this is kind of a deeper question, so it's fine if you don't have an answer for it, but like if something ends up falling into both, do you think that has to do with the, with the hero in terms of their nature and the fact that they might fall under both kind of archetypes? Do you think it's kind of random, just the story asks for that? Or what, what do you think might be behind that, if you know? Well, <laughs> that's the answer. My, well my definition of, arch so the word archetype, I guess by the root words means arcos, which means primal or first, and mm. typos, which means like model. So, so the word means primal models. And I believe these are like in our heads from nature <laughs> or divinity, like whichever way you want to go with that. They're like programmed in there. That's why. So my definition, that's the root words. But my definition is an archetype is something a human being can recognize even in a dream. We don't need to be told like we can recognize. I've had dreams like that. <laughs> yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. so I had a dream up. recently with a mentor character. That was my subconscious was definitely <laughs> trying to teach me. So anyway, continue. So yeah. exactly. So these things just bubble up from this, uh, from the, the source of our imagination. And Joseph Campbell has a great quote. I should almost pull it up, but it's in that book, actually. He said, yeah. archetypes based, and I'm butchering this, but he says they can't be manufactured. You can't invent them on your own. They're spontaneous creations of the of the of the mind, and they all contain the he says like the the germ seed of like human understanding of, of life on earth. So when you have a dream of a mentor figure, that's that comes up uh, automatically, and your brain, yeah. your your mind, your imagination fills it in, and you understood something that nobody else told you. And when you go to when when that that understanding, I I think every writer's had this moment where something in a dream comes up, you're like. I am going to use that in a story. Uh, and then you try to tell that too. <laughs> well, even like, uh, like Jim Morrison taking all those drugs and he wrote like the end that's loaded with archetypes. I, I think mm. he literally just took a lot of drugs, went deep diving into his subconscious and just pulled stuff up and made songs out of them. And we hear these songs and no matter how bizarre the song is, we're still resonating. It still resonates with us because it's archetypal. There's, he pulled something up that I can understand, you know, so I, okay. I think so when you say what's behind it, I think it's 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 a writer, a writer's job as this particular type of creative person is to pull those up and to, and to articulate those. And mm -hmm. that's hard. You know, a painter gets to do it more instinctively. And that's not to demean painting by any stretch. It's a different type of creative art, uh, science or art writing. You have to articulate it. You have to be specific enough to, to write it down in a sentence. And that can be challenging to translate onto the page what, what that is. But I think our imagination of what an adventure is, if your character's moving out further away from home, you're probably going to stumble on hero's journey type of archetypes. If if your hero or heroine is going deeper into this native culture, you're probably going to start running into those heroines labyrinth archetypes. And in some cases, you can have a little bit of both or characters that are exhibiting a little bit of both.